To say, for the last two weeks, I've done nothing but work, I've had a day off, um, I've put in 80 hours overtime, I'm pretty shagged, I'm knackered, and the best thing of all, for the next two days I've got to do 12 hour shifts, at night time, I'm actually in a pretty good mood. And the reason I'm in a good mood is the Friday night intro is back! Yes, so it's back. I feel complete again. I really felt dirty doing the last few videos without it, so it's back again. And uh, let's crack on with the Friday night rant drink. In fact, I just need to play it again. So yes, it's back. Knackered now. So, First of all, I need to apologise that the Friday night drink has been delayed. Um, we went to co-op to get it, uh, find a nice brew as well. I was impressed by it, and then um, we couldn't have it. Joe got ID'd, <laughs> and um, I said, don't worry, I'll pay for this. And she went, no, because I know she's going to drink it, and she needs ID. So they turfed us away from co-op for alcohol, which is awesome. So I've had to go with vodka and coke, and as you can see, I've pre-drank some before the start of the Friday night run, which I feel dirty. I like to taste something new and show my experience with you, which I can't do today. But nonetheless, lovely jubbly. Happy Movember to everybody. I've noticed um, there's a few people doing it. Uh, Martin, Game Link, uh, Marcus is doing it as well. Marcus, you grow a moustache way too fast, mate. And uh, yes, I'm thinking about doing it myself. So at the moment, I've got my... Just a bit of stubble going on. Um, I'm contemplating either shaving it into a tash, which Joe says I'm allowed to do, but then I turn into my old man. I look very much like my old man, so I don't want to do that because I know I'll get turfed out of the bed when I go to sleep at night. Um, the alternative is a full beard, but beards and bold people don't kind of mix, so I might go with that. Or the alternative is handlebars. And I did grow handlebars once for a laugh at a party, and they looked awesome, I really liked them, and Joe absolutely hated them, so, um, yeah, first I'll put it to you then, what should I do, tash, beard, or handlebars? So, I'll leave that down to you, and if you all end up picking handlebars, then Joe has to lump it. So this week I want to touch upon something I've never spoke about before, and it's sound. And, um, obviously, games, a major thing of games is obviously the graphics, the story, and the sound, and I never really touch upon sound. So, several things I wrote down this week I wanted to talk about, and I noticed it's all revolving around sound, so I'm going to have my little sound section. And the first thing I want to talk about is Battlefield 3. Now, I've played an hour of Battlefield just because of the amount of work I've been doing and overtime, so I've not put enough into it to actually say how good the game is, but so far I'm really enjoying it. But the thing I noticed that Battlefield, I've always thought had awesome sound, but... Things like Call of Duty, what I notice is when you're playing like uh, the offline mode or anything like that, when you're actually running down somewhere where all the gunshots are going off, if you pause for a second, you will hear the noises repeat, say, every 30 seconds or 45 seconds. A lot of the sounds are just on a loop to submerge you into the game. And that kind of disconnects me a bit because it's repetitive sound. And I've never really noticed it until I played Battlefield. And I was going along and you've got the normal background noise of traffic and things like that and then I got into a gunfight and all the bullets are whizzing past and it just sounded or it, the best way to describe it is it sounds like when you watch the news and they're going oh we're on the Syrian border or something like that and then a film and all the noise and the cracks and stuff like that all that kind of sounds that you hear in Battlefield but the thing was most impressive for me is the lack of sound now I went into a gunfight I was shooting everybody there. then I ducked behind a car they couldn't see me I couldn't see them so they stopped shooting and then it was quiet and it was so frightening because if it was Call of Duty it would have just gone all different noises but because no one was shooting the sound stopped and that just made me feel so involved in the game and I was so frightened because I'm like where's the shot going to come from and then you just hear that one and it's a sniper rifle and I was just like the sound in this game is absolutely immense and I was really impressed by it but going on sound not just the sound effects but the actual music in games Obviously, some games get it right, so first of all, Grand Theft Auto has always had a great soundtrack. The, the guys that they hire for Grand Theft Auto are absolutely awesome because the soundtracks are really, really good. Um, Grand Theft Auto V trailer has obviously just come out this week, and as soon as you started playing that, 
The music played, and it was by a band called The Small Face, the actual music is. And it just sets the tone straight away. You're just like, yes. And you're just like, I'm going to enjoy this game. And they're really clever. It just put, if, that, if you watch that trailer without the sand, you wouldn't be as so submerged. And it is that that sets the key. So, first of all, Grand Theft Auto's awesome sand, it's got to be said. But um, when I've been at work this week, I've just been playing some music in the background. And I've noticed if I play some, I don't know, I listen to absolutely everything. So if I had some particular song that was in your face, when I'm working, if I get to a complex part or something like that at work and I have to think for a second, then I stop the music because it kind of detracts, well not detracts, but it it's harder to concentrate if something's going off all the time. And you're like, right, I don't want that. But then I put on Fable soundtrack. And I also put on Sky, not Skyrim, sorry, um, Oblivion soundtrack. And I noticed, because I was doing a 12 hour shift, I actually had the entire thing looping, all like 12 tracks, over and over again for 12 hours, and I didn't really notice. And because that music just sits so perfectly in the background, I could do all my complex stuff at work, and not at all go, that's in your face, and it was perfect. And I was thinking that, obviously, that is the same with games. Every time we've played a game, it's always been fine, because you just play it and go, cool. But if they got it wrong, it would kind of make you go, oh, this is annoying why I'm trying to read this or something like that. So I've only just realised this week how important sound is to a game. And as well this week, this Skyrim, um, a video talking about the actual sound. So like I said, everything falls into sound. It uh, came out this week and I watched it and it's just absolutely amazing because we all know the... Um, Elder Scrolls theme, it's just, it's an absolutely awesome theme, first of all. But it says what they wanted to do for Skyrim, is they wanted to keep that, but they wanted to have it sung by, like, Vikings. So, they was like, right, that's fine, we can, we can do that. But the, obviously, Vikings got to sing lyrics, and they didn't know what lyrics to do. So they went to a guy and says, listen, right, we want you to not only take the theme music, we want you to apply lyrics to it. But to complicate things, we want the lyrics in dragon voice. And we want them Dragon Voice lyrics to be able to be switched back into English and also make sense. And we want the Dragonborn lyrics to rhyme and the English ones to also rhyme. So that's a task in itself. And he went away, apparently he warmed up some mead, necked it, wrote it, come back, went bosh and it's done. And I was just watching like the guys all singing it. And I was just like, it's just something that you don't really say about, like somebody will play a game, like Uncharted for instance, and they'll go, graphics, awesome, story, awesome, really, really good, but I think sound gets left out quite a lot, so that's just my piece to just say, to you sound, you are awesome. So, have a drink, got something to moan about. For the last two Friday Night Rants, EA has got it, they've had it, um, I've said my two cents about them, but they don't stop. They want me to keep moaning. So this week, obviously, Origin's been released, which is EA's version of Steam, because they think, Steam, no, you're not going to take our money. We're going to release our own application and get the money direct, which I can't actually moan about, really. If they're making games and they want to get the money direct, they've cut Steam out. So I've not really got much of a problem with that, apart from Origin is apparently doing some nasty things. And what it is, is people are reporting um, that Origin is spying on them. And what they're doing is a few clever people have obviously looking in the task manager, looking at what processes are running. And Origin's not just looking inside the game folders, it's looking in other folders. So somebody took a screenshot of an actual showing that Origin was looking in a financial document, which is a bit weird. Um, EA's turned around and says, no, no, we're not doing such things. But there is screenshots out there showing that Origin is activating different things. So people are questioning now, what are they actually looking for? They're trying to look at what your financial records are. Are they trying to look at anything? And obviously it sounds over the top and it might not be true. And obviously they might not be just looking into your bank details and stuff like that. But the thing is, it wouldn't at all surprise me if they're just looking at basic things that, what other games have you got installed from other developers? Look how many they are. What games do we need to tailor make to get these people to buy them? So it is quite worrying if, if they are doing that. So, um, first of all, the actual terms and conditions apparently break some of the German laws. And in Germany, they actually says, right, if you've downloaded Battlefield or anything like that through Origin, we've looked at the terms and conditions, they're against our laws, you can get your money back on Battlefield, even if you've activated the code, which is really good of them to say that. That's not EA, by the way. That's just the shops and stuff like that are selling these PC games. But, um, EA's turned around now and they've gone, right, tell you what, we've, we've rewrote our terms and conditions now to please the Germans. 
and they've left it at that. But still, what is Origin actually doing? So I'm going to definitely keep my eye on that and see what happens and if it actually does come out to be a lawsuit because it does sound dodgy and there is photo, photos of it actually doing it. So I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Even so, it just sounds like EA is just digging a hole at the moment. So it's a shame that they've got the fingers in so many pies because I'd love to just turn around and go, right, EA, I'm not giving you any money anymore. But they, they own practically all the good games. So it's a shame. So this week, um, last week, first of all, actually, I was talking about, obviously, um, Xbox 3 is on its way, and there was no news about the PlayStation. But apparently some um, patents are kicking around at the moment that PlayStation are looking at a new type of controller, and it is quite interesting. And what it is, is a biometric controller. And for anyone who don't know what biometric controllers are, which is majority of us, a simple things that you're just going to read the amount of sweat are in our hands, um, pulse rates and stuff like that, so they can get a feeling of what you're feeling. So what the idea is, when you're playing a game, if you're slightly scared, it will know that, and then it will tailor make the game to what you're feeling. And also, if you're questioning somebody, if you're slightly angry, it's gonna pick that up, and that character will respond to how you're feeling. Now, that's pretty cool. Now, I don't know if I'm sold by this, because if this is true, like, one, it would be pretty cool, it really submerge it. I'll get a different output to everyone else, because we'll all be, some people will be pussies like, ah! and then it will just do something different. Or some people are like, yeah, I'm not bothered, I don't care. And then the character will do something back to him. So it's cool that everyone's going to get a different outcome. But at the same time, how many developers are going to support this? Because I know um, Nintendo did have the clip-on thing so they could do the pulse monitor. And that could have been used, but then it wasn't. And fair enough, the one selling it as much as, like, this, sound, this product sounds like it's selling it. But still, is it going to be something that's just made and not supported, like the Kinect? Or is it just going to be a really cool feature that is going to change games? So that's something interesting that's being painted. So it's not on the cards for PlayStation 4. It's just something interesting I found I wanted to tell you. And also, which has been not painted but trademarked, is the word dead world. And I don't know why I said it that loud. But a dead world is being painted by Techland. I had to look down there. I was going to say Triarch. But no, <laughs> Techland have done it. So if no one don't know. Techland have obviously released Dead Island, so could this be Dead Island 2, Dead World? And um, with that, when it when the news came out, I was like, oh, that's cool. And a lot of people were like, oh, I can't believe they're releasing another one, another one, and stuff like that. But I am glad they are, because I've not heard of much DLC coming out for Dead Island. Personally, I am not a big fan of DLC. I much prefer them to release the game, and then start working on the next one. And I don't want them to release it straight away. I don't want it to be like a Call of Duty or, or the other first person shooters or FIFA or anything like that. I don't want one every year. But like decent games take about four years to create. So if I play a decent game, I am excited if I know they're already working on the next one. Because I know I've got four years until it turns up and then when it comes, it's all gonna be new. So I've got no problem if they're working on one straight away, provided it's four years away. Well, a lot of people was kicking off about it. And I was just like, well, to me, I don't like DLC because half of it feels like it's already been pre-done and removed from the game and then fed back to you at another price. And some people do support the game, like um, Burnout, they release loads of download content and kept that game fresh. So on one hand, it keeps the game fresh, but on the other hand, I don't like to pay once I've already paid for a game. So I'm happy that there might be a Dead Island 2 already in the pipeline. So speaking of DLC, Uncharted 3 is out, way! A lot of people are enjoying it, way! And um, a few people have get it bad reviews, but to be fair, if they're giving it bad reviews, it's because a lot of people are like, oh, he gave it a bad review, and then everybody goes to read the bad review, and it's good traffic for a website. So some people are just trolling, really. But on the other hand, some people might be giving it bad reviews, and that's fine, but not many people are. I've got something bad to say about it, and what that is, is I've not played it yet, so when I play it, I know I'm going to enjoy it, the game's going to be absolutely awesome, but there is one problem, and that was a lot of people got the game early, so obviously they chucked it into the console, started playing in story mode, and that went fine, but there was clever, what they decided to do, Naughty Dog did, was not have the servers running, so you couldn't get online, you couldn't play multiplayer, so therefore no one could actually play it before the actual release date came along, which is fine. But a lot of people went in and was looking at the characters and they've got different clothes and different items and they're all uh, coming soon download content. But when they actually looked at the items, they're there. Well, if the server's turned off, 
theoretically, you shouldn't be able to connect to see this artwork, these skins of such. But they're there, so therefore, they're on the disc. So, the game's going to be awesome, don't get me wrong, I can't wait to play it. But they've done that thing where they've created something, they've stuck it on the disc, you've brought it, then you've got to pay to take something out of something you've just purchased. So, that's the only one thing I can say about it, you know what I mean? The game looks awesome, so that's just one thing I wanted to bring up, because if anyone does it, I'll pull them up on it, because I absolutely hate it. So, to finish this off then, um, I just want to talk about the Grand Theft Auto V trailer, and it looks absolutely awesome. But the cool thing was, it looks like, it's, um, I just like the entire setting of it, and there's lots of rumours going around saying you could be Tommy Vassetti and all these different things, and if you wore that, it's going to be awesome. So I just like how uh, the buzz is kicked off and everyone's guessing what's this and what's that and what's this. But um, somebody noticed there was a dog, and most people are like, well, it's only a dog. But then it made me realise Grand Theft Autos lacked animals. Like, the only thing I can ever remember out of Grand Theft Auto is an eagle that used to shoot with a sniper rifle. And apart from that, there was nothing, even when I remember in... San Andreas, going out to the farms, I can't remember any cows, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty certain there was no cows, and I didn't even notice, so it just made me realise that they've gotten all this time without giving us any animals, so it's going to be quite cool after playing things like Red Dead, and running around and going hunting and stuff like that, to actually have a Grand Theft Auto, where obviously if you're bored, you nick a car, you chase away from the cops, you can do all these awesome things. So if it's on top of it now to go hunting, will be pretty cool. And I'm not saying they're going to put bears in there, but you know, for a laugh with friends, you're going to go around and shoot dogs. Now a lot of people are like, oh that's terrible, you shouldn't be doing that, but it would be fun. So it's going to be pretty cool to see Grand Theft Auto with animals. And at the same time, there's obviously on the trailer you can see jets flying around, planes, blimps, and that's what I think Grand Theft Auto 4 missed for me. I just like to nick a plane and just go around the map. And for, it just sounds like Grand Theft Auto is awesome anyway, but they've obviously listened to why people have been moaned about number four and they've fixed it, then number five is looking good. But this is only going on like a minute and a half trailer, but I am super excited for it. So sorry, it's a bit of a mishmashy Pride Night rant, but to make up for it, we got the intro back. So I'm gonna leave us with the um, question of the week, and that simply is, do you prefer to buy a game and them to give you endless DLC to keep it fresh, or do you prefer them to start work on number two straight away? So, what do you want, DLC or another game? And that's it guys, so thank you very much, happy Movember, and don't forget, handlebars, full tash, which is not a tash, that's a full beard, or a tash. So, let me know in the comments, and happy November, Movember, I messed that line up. Cheers guys, thanks a lot.